He knows what makes men and women tick. She's one of 14 characters portrayed by Norman Navrotsky in a one-man show that's touring Canadian universities. These characters help him to approach topics like masturbation or sexual pleasure. Norman's one-man show is called I Don't Understand Women. But as you've probably gathered by now, the title doesn't really describe what's going on on stage. <laughs> My name's Norman Navratsky. I'm a Montreal-based cabaret artist, an author, a musician, an actor, an educator, and a sex advocate. And that's why I'm here today to talk to you about my series of four uh, anti-sexist, queer positive, anti-homophobic uh, sex comedy shows that I've been doing for more than 20 years now all across Canada and the United States. My original inspiration was to try and stop the attacks on women in my immediate community here in downtown Montreal. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do about this? I'm a man, I'm a cabaret artist, I have access to stages, I can use theater, I can use music, I can use comedy, I'll do a show. The show uh, was a combination of comedy and serious drama. People would laugh, people would cry. Uh, I played 14 different characters. I had costumes, I had giant props. I'm a little butt plug, short and stout. <laughs> Lube me carefully before you try me out. Loop me up real well, my heels to my snout. Slip me in gently or else he'll shout. And it was basically a sneak attack on uh, heterosexism, sexism in general, macho attitudes and behavior, uh, homophobia, and most importantly, it was a show designed to help stop violence against women. The first show I did was 1993 and it was called I Don't Understand Women and the second show that came out of that show was called My Dick and Other Manly Tales and I did that show I came up with that show because people after the first show would come up to me and say hey uh, you know your show was really fabulous but that stuff about gay people take it out we don't want to hear about fags okay and I'm like ah. so the second show was specifically focused on homophobia and heterosexism what's it all about the shows, I based them on real interviews with real people. I interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. I would go to the campus, McGill campus, Concordia campus, the bars in my neighborhood, and I would take all these stories and turn them into composites of characters whose lives are based on the lives of real people. Men have to learn that it's okay to be who they are. And it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to be respectful. It's okay not to want to jump every woman walking past you. It's not all about your fucking dick. You know, it's about people. It's about respecting each other. It's about respecting people's space. And that's what I try and do. Get one guy at a time. And if I get more than one guy to show, I'm happy. I can't say I see these attitudes changing anytime soon. Uh, there have been gradual shifts but there's also been steps backward. There's still a need. I mean, the need hasn't changed. The need is still there. The most gratifying part of doing these shows is having people come up to me after the show and saying things like, I'm a survivor. Don't stop what you're doing. Don't ever stop. This is a poem from my first book of poetry called Rebel Moon, Anarchist Ransom Poems, and the poem is called All My Life. I lived with a woman who came home one night and told me she had been harassed by two men in the street. I asked her, why didn't you say something? Fight back, put them in their place. She looked at me in the eyes and said, all my life, all my life I've had to put up with men in the street, total strangers who think they're God's gift to women. They've pawed at me, grabbed me, brushed against me, stared at me, leered at me, bumped into me, tried to cop a feel from me, stroked my hair, twisted it in their hands, whistled at me, followed me, blocked me, screamed at me, ridiculed me, terrorized me, insulted me, stood in front of me, went out of their way to brush up against me, laughed at me, tested me, rolled down their windows and yelled at me, demanded my name, my number, 
saying they wanted to get to know me, asked me to suck them, fuck them, marry them in the street all my life, all my life. And I'm used to it. And that's the way it goes. If I took time out each day, each night, to deal with it on the spot, I wouldn't have a life. I'd be doing nothing else. And I looked into her eyes. I didn't know what to say. And all I could feel was a sickness in my stomach. And all I could do was write this down and tell you, tell all men, that this has got to stop. Better, 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 better